guys and welcome to how to gastro in today's video we will be talking about diverticular disease more specifically diverticulosis and diverticulitis so let's get started so to begin let's go over the definitions of diverticulosis and diverticulitis diverticulosis is the condition of having multiple pouches called diverticula in the colon that are not inflamed these are outpockets of colonic mucosa and submucosa through weaknesses of muscle layers in the colon wall. So just to stop there and explain further in the pictures below, this is actually a cross section of the layers that make up the colon. And if you look here in this little magnified box from this segment of the wall, you'll see that the colon is made up of four main layers, mainly the mucosa layer, the submucosa layer, the muscular layer, and then lastly, we have the serous layer. So the mucosa and submucosa are actually the innermost layers, and then we have the muscular and serous layers, which are the outer layers. So diverticulosis, from the definition, we said that these are little pouches. So let's hop on down to this picture, and you can see these little pouches. And these pouches have a wall that is made up of two layers, and that's only the mucosa and submucosal layers. And these so-called pouches are special because they push their way through weak areas of the muscular layer. So this little mucosal and submucosal layers push through this muscular layer. And this is actually the result, this pouch-like structure, which is called a diverticular. So diverticulosis is just the condition of having these pouches that are not inflamed. Just them being present means that a patient suffers from diverticulosis. Diverticulitis, however, is a digestive disease in which these pouches within the colon become inflamed and infected. So if you look at this image here on the right, we can see that these little pouches, they're not clear and empty anymore. They're actually full of bacteria, white blood cells, pus cells, and they're also full of fecal matter because remember, we're dealing with parts of the colon now. So in this area, we normally have feces. So feces get in there and they're able to contaminate these pouches. And when these pouches become contaminated, they become infected. And when they become infected, our patient has diverticulitis. So that is the difference between just having the pouches being present, diverticulosis, versus having those pouches which are now inflamed and infected, which is diverticulitis. Now let's talk about some signs and symptoms of diverticular disease. Most people with diverticulosis don't have symptoms. So these are usually the patients who have these pouches, but their pouches are not really causing them much problems because their pouches are there, but they're not inflamed or infected. So the patient will have no symptoms. Sometimes, in a few cases, patients may incur mild cramps, bloating, or constipation. However, when these pouches become infected, meaning diverticulitis sets in, then the patient will experience belly pain, usually on the lower left side, that is sometimes worse when you move, and this is actually the most common symptom. The patient may also have fever and chills. These are signs of infection, fever and chills. They will also have bloating and gas, diarrhea or constipation, nausea and sometimes vomiting, and not feeling like eating. So now let's talk about some complications of diverticular disease. Diverticular disease can present with painless rectal bleeding as per presence of bright red blood per rectum. So this is actually quite a common complication of diverticular disease. Usually these little pockets tend to bleed out and when they bleed out, the patient will experience fresh blood per rectum, which means that when they do pass stool or they go to the bathroom, they recognize fresh brightly red blood in their stool. And for my med students out there, you guys know that this is actually called hematochesia. Diverticular disease was also found to be associated with a higher risk of left-sided colon cancer. So usually the people who suffer from diverticulosis or diverticulitis also have a somewhat of a predisposition to the development of colon cancer. An abscess, which occurs when pus collects in that pouch, so this is an infected pouch, in my bottom right corner and that is an abscess of the pouch and that is actually a single pouch which has undergone diverticulitis. Continuing with complications we can also have an abnormal passageway meaning a fistula between sections of the bowel and the bladder 
And if you look at my picture on the left, I've shown you an example of this. Because these patches come out of the colon wall, you can see one here, one up here, one up here, one up here. And there's also a large one down here. And then there was one here, but it actually sort of made a passageway into the bladder. And this is quite a big problem, as you can imagine, because our colon holds our fecal matter. And when this fecal matter passes from the colon into the bladder, it's going to cause quite a big problem for the urinary tract indeed. And once this fecal matter with normal flora of the colon and the bacteria within our digestive system enters our urinary tract system, it's going to be quite gnarly indeed. As well as the patient is now going to pass feces in the urine. And the patient will also suffer urinary tract symptoms such as a UTI and a bladder infection and so on. Peritonitis can also occur and this occurs when the infected or inflamed pouch ruptures spilling intestinal contents into your abdominal cavity and something to note definitely is that peritonitis is a medical emergency and requires immediate care. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of diverticular disease. Blood tests, such as a complete blood count, or CBC, which will show increased white blood cells and acute phase proteins. So if these pouches are inflamed, we're going to have the white blood cells high in the blood report. We also have the acute phase proteins high, which show signs of inflammation in the body. A colonoscopy can be done to diagnose diverticular disease, and this is actually the aspect on the colonoscopy. You can see these multiple pouches coming out of the wall of the colon. A fecal occult blood test can be done, and this is just to test the presence of blood in the stool. A barium enema can be done, and this is a picture of a barium enema on the right. So you can see where the barium is actually entered into these little pouches, and a series of x-rays is then taken after, which shows this abnormal appearance, which is the presence of these diverticula in the colonic wall. And we can also do a CT scan to confirm the diagnosis. And finally, let's talk about the treatment options in diverticular disease. In uncomplicated diverticulitis, the treatment is antibiotics to treat the infection, a pain reliever such as acetaminophen, also known as Tylenol, and a liquid diet for a few days while the bowel heals is suggested. So if you noticed here, I only put in the treatment options for diverticulitis and not diverticulosis. And that's because patients with diverticulosis usually aren't symptomatic, which means that they are asymptomatic and usually they don't require treatment. Treatment is only required when these little sacs or pouches become infected and that's when diverticulitis sets in. So in uncomplicated cases, we can just treat with antibiotics for the infection, pain relief such as Tylenol and a liquid diet just to give bowel a chance to rest over a few days. Treatment in complicated diverticulitis and diverticular bleeding involves surgical removal of the segment of the colon containing the diverticula and after the diseased area is removed, the healthy ends of the colon are sewn back together. Surgery is also used to treat long-lasting or chronic pain, a bowel obstruction, a fistula or a pocket of infection, meaning an abscess. So in my picture on the bottom right, we have the portion of the colon that contains the diverticular being resected and the healthy parts being sewn together. So this little part that contained the diverticular were found here and it's been removed and the healthy segments of the colon are sewn back together. And that brings us to the end of this presentation on diverticular disease. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment and share. I hope you find these presentations very useful. And as always, if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.